With all due respect, Mr. Foster, I think you've got to change your game plan. What you have told people is to stay put and to sit this out and to wait for your help. I believe there's simply no realistic way for you to honor that, sir. And I, I, I think that if you do, people are going to die waiting for you. <laughs> you need to retract your advice. Hey, uh, I can do it again. <laughs> you need to retract your advice. You need to tell them to come to you. Mr. Lieberman, FEMA will draw on every resource possible to rescue these people. That's our federal obligation. No, sir, this is not about protocol, Mr. Foster. This is this is uh, about survival and nothing more. I mean, when, when this ash fall stops and and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the air starts to clear, the people who are trapped are going to, like, like we are, are going to start walking. They're going to start walking rather than stay here and wait to die. And, and they're, they're certainly not going to make it, sir, without your help. You, you, need, you need to help us. You need to tell us where to walk. We need to have supplies dropped for us along the way. I mean, if we are going to walk for life, then it's up to you guys to help us. Damn it. He wants people to walk through the ash? Wait, is he crazy? The added complication was that eight out of ten FEMA centers who would normally help to coordinate the rescue were out of action because they too were under the ash cloud. It was only the very eastern and western coast with a very fine covering of ash who were still functioning. So we had to look outside for help with our allies, South America, Europe, Australia. But you see, it was about that time, three to four days in that people outside the U.S. started to wake up to the fact that this wasn't just our catastrophe. It was theirs too. They could see it because that was the time it took for the sulfur aerosols from Yellowstone to go right around the globe and start a global disaster. Meanwhile, the first effects of the disaster are being felt closer to home as skies turn red over large areas of Britain due to the huge concentrations of sulfur dioxide released by the eruption. Asphalt has been reported on cars and buildings all over the country. Well, how serious Hi, these Rick effects Lieberman. will become Sorry, largely because of right right the US at the moment. The new twist will be the onslaught of really heavy rainfall. When you get big eruptions like this, tiny asphalt. a nuclei for water droplets so you get torrential okay. rain hundreds of thousands of u.s cities <sighs> lahars from the volcano swept 23,000 people to their deaths thousands of others have been to lahars serious <laughs> will become like largely dependent on I how long the eruption right now, continues to like, be Rick Lieberman's story. Where are you? I just keep thinking, uh, you know, could I have done something different? You know, should I have done something different? You know, just been more decisive or stronger if I could have, uh, you know, made the call earlier. You know, maybe, maybe that would have changed things. <coughs> That would have saved some lives. Uh, I guess that's up to other people to judge. Uh, and my family, it's, it's, it's them who will be left with the, uh, with the fallout of that. <coughs> no, these... <coughs> these men that I'm with, they think that if we stay... They think if we stay put that we're going to be rescued. But uh, I honest to God believe that if we, if we just... Day five, over 2,000 cubic kilometers of ash and pumice had been dumped across the United States. Two and a half thousand times more than the fallout from Mount St. Helens. 
but that was only about 10% of what was in the magma chamber. How much more would come out depended on how much more eruptible magma was down there. The country was already on its knees. Thousands of people dead, millions of others homeless. If it didn't stop soon, well, let's just say we were running out of options. We have just received reports that Mexican authorities closed the border four hours ago. According to aid workers in the area, three million people have now gathered at the Mexican border, many of them without shelter, food, or money. Maggie Chin, KCBZ News. They've closed the border? To U.S. citizens, yes. That's totally unacceptable. They're condemning people to death. The Mexicans say they can't cope with the numbers. Well, we're going to have to kick some ass. Well, I think the president might feel that right now is a bad time to invade Mexico, Bob. Can we move on? Yes, sir. All right. Our best case scenario is if the eruption stops in two days. If that's the case, access to zones one and two won't be possible until at least three to four weeks after that. So it's unlikely we'll find any survivors. We can start supply drops into zones three through five about two weeks after the eruption ends if the weather is with us. But it's going to have to be piecemeal, depending on whether the satellite can find clean skies for the aircraft. That's too long. What about Rick's walk to life? We can't advise people to walk through the ash. It's just too dangerous. So we're asking people just to sit there and starve to death? There are hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people stumbling around out there looking for help. All right, we'll go with walk to life. I need to hear a plan out of this room as to how to do that fast. <coughs> well, it's still raining. Ash? <coughs> Save the battery, we're gonna need it outside. <laughs> Johnson. Yeah. Would the Air Force be looking for you? For me? Yeah, you know. Leave no man behind and all that. That's the Rangers. So the Air Force does leave them behind? I guess. I should have joined the Rangers. Cheyenne's our best bet. <coughs> we should head there. <coughs> FEMA. <coughs> FEMA knows we're here. They'll send somebody. FEMA's got 25 million people to save. By the time they find us, we'll have starved to death. Not if we hate Johnson. <laughs> Try it, man. <laughs> Definitely a book in this when we get out. <laughs> oh, I don't know. One doesn't like to say I told you so. We assumed that when all the vents merged together to form a new caldera, then the pressure would drop and the eruption would stop. That was our thinking. Then, on day seven, our seismographs began to pick up massive quakes, and we realized that the ground within the new caldera rim was beginning to collapse, collapse into the empty space left by the ejected magma. 